Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to talk about a movie that I saw called Bullet Train, uh, which just released this past weekend. And I saw it with my friend Nathan at Universal Studios. And I had a blast watching this movie. I will say though, it is, before we get into some of the details of it and, and some of my thoughts on it, just my basic thoughts are I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and it reminded me of films like Smoking Aces and The Big Hit, which neither of those movies were, you know, uh, did a lot of money at the box office. Uh, but I thought they were both fun movies that have like a little bit of a dark sense of humor to it and kind of a, a weird sense of humor to it. And it's certainly my friend Nate's sense of humor because uh, Nate is a screenwriter and a filmmaker. And a lot of times he'll give me scripts and his main characters will talk a lot like Brad Pitt does in this movie. Uh, and so I kind of like that. I was like, okay, this reminds me of some of the stuff Nate does, which is very niche, I feel. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think like if you do it successfully, it's something like Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, especially where everyone just kind of like caught off guard by it. And it's like, oh, there's a lot of fun humor here. But if you if you do it too much, I feel like it goes into a territory where most people are like, eh, I'm not really in the, you know, it, it kind of pushes them out a little bit. And that's what I felt like this film probably is going to do to a mass audience. I feel like some of the humor in this and uh, is going to push kind of people away. Uh, this feels like a, a, a John Wick with a little bit of humor kind of movie um, where you have someone who's uh, kind of doesn't want to do the assassin thing anymore, which is Brad Pitt's character, a uh, code name Ladybug. And, uh, and he doesn't kind of want to do this anymore. And so uh, he gets pulled into a job because someone calls out sick and he gets this job where he just has to go grab a suitcase off a bullet train and then leave. And that's it. Uh, but of course, it, it like escalates into this mayhem thing where it's kind of like snakes on a plane with like, you know, kind of in a way because there is one snake, but just, I mean, the sense of humor and the, the style and the presentation, I feel like, is just really kind of tongue-in-cheek, over the top. Uh, the action is very much like a, a stunt person's movie. I think David Leach is the director of this. He did one of the Deadpool movies, I think the second one, and I believe he worked on John Wick as well, the first film. Um, so, and it's, it, it reads, like when you're watching this, some of the action is so good, um, and it, but it's over so quick, too, because they pepper in a little bit of humor as well. So they, they try to do their own thing with it, and I think Sony was really hoping this would be would have been a really big hit because they want to do more movies obviously with David Leach and then David Leach wants to do more movies that are stunt team oriented where he can bring in and elevate stunt performers um, into you know roles and into you know having more hands-on approach to some of the action scenes in his movies and, and other movies hopefully and so I think there was a lot of ambition with this movie but I think they forgot at the end of the day they wrote something that is is very niche you know it's a it's not something like a, a Kill Bill where that actually got out there to more people. Um, I feel like this one is not doing great in the theaters, and I feel like a word of mouth could help it a little bit on, you know, when it goes to digital and stuff, but I don't know if it, it was, uh, you know, made to be a theatrical movie because I mean, it is because the stars in it, but I feel like the, the type of movie it is, it's not a mass appeal movie, I feel. Uh, but I liked it. I certainly enjoyed it. And, uh, and if you did too or didn't, whatever it is, let me know down below. Um, but we'll get into some details here because. Ultimately, like I said, this feels like a Smoking Aces or like a big hit with Mark Wahlberg. Like those movies I thought are a lot of fun. Um, even like something like Boondock Saints, which that's more of a niche thing too, where there's a little bit of dark humor mixed in with like shootouts and action scenes. So that's kind of what this is. But the fights in this are really fun and really intense and uh, and kind of silly. You know, like they have fun with it. They embrace that they're making a fun movie. And that's one thing I liked. If you watch the trailer for this movie the movie is exactly like the trailer. Like there's no, you know, like misguidedness here. <laughs> like what the trailer showed you, the movie gives you a hundred percent. So if you're not sure if you want to see this movie, go watch the trailer again and see how you feel after that trailer. And that'll prepare you perfectly for the movie. I mean, this is one of those things where after the movie, I looked at my friend Nathan, I said, wow, the trailer was like a, a exact precursor for this. Like I had fun watching a trailer and I had fun watching this movie and he was like, exactly like he felt the same way. So, uh, so yeah, I would say, you know, check out the trailer and that will tell you everything you really need to know about this movie. Um, there are some cool twists and reveals in it. Uh, so I won't get into spoilers here, but I will say the cast I thought was really good. And I think this was another reason why Sony wanted this to be so big is because some of these stars in this movie are going to be part of the Sony's Venom cinematic Spider-Man universe, uh, like Aaron Taylor Johnson, who played Quicksilver in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is playing Tangerine in this movie, and his brother Lemon, played by Brian Tyree, uh, Ty Brian Tyree Henry. Uh, sorry, I have some names written here, but Brian Tyree Henry I've seen in the other movies, very funny guy, and him and Aaron Taylor Johnson as brothers in this movie were hilarious uh, it was really great and there was some heart to it too i was actually surprised they hit you with a little bit of heart towards the end and i was like 
you know what, I wasn't expecting that with these two characters because uh, they kind of came across as idiots, although they are professional and you get to see them be badasses in the movie, but they kind of start off as goofballs, uh, talking about Thomas, the tank engine and stuff. And I don't know, it was fun. Um, it's a fun movie. So uh, so I like those characters a lot. Um, Joey King plays a, a character called the Prince in this, and they do that like kind of Kill Bill thing and like can some other movies do this too where they like slap that like, like all right this is the prince and they show someone and they're like this is Ladybug you know uh, and they have like a big piece of art that splashes on the screen like art style um, and it's it's fun so again you you know you're getting into something over the top and semi unrealistic and everything like that and, and they set you that up for that perfectly um, I won't talk about you know some of the reveals like I said like who plays the white death although I really like that actor so that was cool that they had uh, that that actor in here um, Maria is played by Sandra Bullock and you hear her voice through most of the movie but you do get to see her later on in the film um, and then this guy Bad Bunny who was also supposed to be or still might still be in an upcoming Sony Venom Spider-Man cinematic movie uh, where he's playing like a luchador superhero uh, from the Spider-Man comic books um, he actually surprisingly had a very very small part in this movie like because uh, he's in the trailer and they show him fighting Brad Pitt quite a bit and uh, and so I was like okay and then they were pumping him up for this you know uh, Sony Spider-Man spinoff movie and I was surprised how little screen time he actually had but what screen time he has he plays like his character well he's like a silent assassin so he doesn't really talk so you don't really get a big sense of him as an actor but as a, a fighter like he's actually really good in, in the scene so um, and then there's the Hornet who again I don't want to spoil who plays that character um a, a hero uh, from uh from heroes the show heroes uh, masioka he plays the conductor in this so it was cool to see him um hiroyuki sonata who we've seen in tons of movies a uh, very very awesome actor he shows up in this as well and it just it's got a great cast it really really does um and uh, i was surprised at some of the reveals uh, especially when they reveal the person who called out sick <laughs> you know so that uh, brad pitt could get the job they reveal who who that person is and then there's also a couple other uh famous actors that have small scenes in the movie that are pretty funny uh so yeah i would say definitely check out the movie if you like things like smoking aces and boondock saints and the big hit like if you like movies like that or even kill bill to an extent you know if, if you thought some of the humor in kill bill landed with you um again that seemed to get a masser reach with that maybe because it was tarantino or i don't know but uh this one i don't think is going to have as much of a reach as, as kill bill but i think over time it could develop a good cult following it's it's fun it, it's actually just a fun action movie with great action scenes and uh and it has like a, a like an arc in a way and uh, and some cool plot point moments um while also being silly and, and ridiculous at the same time so if that sounds like your cup of tea i would say drink up it, it's it's a fun time at the theater um or if you wait till it comes out on digital that's fine too but either way i say check it out especially if you're a fan of good action scenes and uh, and you know and some mixed in with a little bit of humor as well uh because you'll get that and there's a lot of like Japanese specific humor in this movie with like little cartoons popping up and a, and a character dressed as like a giant uh, koala or something like <laughs> there's 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 a lot of fun stuff in it um fizzy water I mean there's like there's a lot of cool things that they they put in this movie that are you know make sense to and uh, I think my friend was telling me he's like oh they shot that whole movie on like a set like they built a train for them to, to redecorate and shoot. I'm like, well, yeah, you have to kind of like snakes on a plane. Like you have to, cause there's so many things that happen in this movie that you could not control that in a real environment. You couldn't go on a real bullet train and control any of the elements that happened in this movie. So yeah, that makes a ton of sense, but it is, it's a very slick looking movie. I love the use of color in it. It's, it's really, really well done overall. And it, I, like I said, it's a fun time. So if you're in for a fun time, fun action movie, Go check out Bullet Train. I highly recommend it. Um, I would say it's probably like a four out of five for me. Uh, I, I really did have a good time there. But um, I will say, like I said, it's not for everyone. So if you didn't like Smoking Aces or even Kill Bill on some level or John Wick on some level or Deadpool on some level, <laughs> like I would say if those aren't your movies, yeah, probably not going to like this one. But if those do, you know, if you do like those movies, um, you know, check this one out. And if you haven't seen any of the movies I mentioned, like Big Hit or anything, go check those out too. Those are a lot of fun. So thanks so much for watching the show. Let me know your comments down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.